Normally, in St. Petersburg, before COVID-19, long lines would crowd in front of the Hermitage to enter the buildings that contain the great works of art in the collection from Egypt to 18th century. But strangely, in front of the great buildings of the Tsars in the General Staff Building, a 19th century building, there was no one. Strangely, because the Deisling collection of 19th and 20th century art is on display in this building with masterpieces, for example, Matisse La Danse. This collection also contains works by one of the great artists of Russian origin of the early 20th century, Vasily Vasilievich Kandinsky. Although Kandinsky was born in Russia, his great artistic force was acquired in Germany at the beginning of the 20th century. A Germany that in this moment was the avant-garde, where the great transformative movements of art were cooked, such as the Bauhaus that will appear in 1919 or the Blauer writer in 1911. All of that are movements in which Kandinsky will be an indispensable part. 1909, Kandinsky. 1909, Kandinsky paints winter landscape. 1909, high point of its first stage. Two years before founding with Franz Marc, the Blauer Reiter, in winter landscape, Kandinsky still has echoes of post-impressionism, of phobism. Here he shares with Cavism the flight from realism and classical figuration, the search for new ways of pictorial expression. In this work, we see a Kandinsky in his way to abstraction. Still, with black brush, Kandinsky draw the counters of the elements, although in some parts they are diluted or invisible. It tends to simplify to geometrize. But the most important thing, a legacy of impressionism and phobism, is the explosion of color. Color explodes as free expressiveness with a loose and cheerful brush stroke. Color spots thick material. Although he is here to impressionism and phobism, Kandinsky here goes much farther. He's the Kandinsky who embraces theosophy and who will soon delve into abstract figuration. The same year he made the Blue Mountain, a great artistic manifestation of modernity. Compositional simplicity almost abstraction and chromatic explosion. Only a year later, in 1911, in the coup, he is already almost totally abstract, finding a new language that is characteristic of his blue period. Winter landscape is a work that marks the transition between one period and the other, and at the same time it's a testimony of a moment of maximum creative concentration of the artist. The work is divided in two planes, two dissonant planes, a cold sensation 
embeds us. It's winter, it's cold, pale blue, faint pink, almost white yellow, almost infinite trees with balanced and thin trunks. But the rear part explodes with a warmer, strange, intense force. The contrast of the winter cold with the fire of the golden sunset, sparkling yellow, Prussian and ultramarine blue, hot pink, blood red. Two planes that create contrast with each other. It's the haunting winter, the contrast between cold and color. Kandinsky is a witness of color, an interpreter of color in his own way. Kandinsky brings us a winter, a winter that is not the one he has seen before his eyes in southern Germany. It's the one he has seen inside himself. This is a concept that was already introduced by Caspar David Friedrich in 18th century, but that here gains its greatest strength because Kandinsky presents us a new winter like his new writer, the Blauer writer, a winter of color with synthetic brush strokes. We look at it and it produces a visual calm. It's the chromatic effect. Also, at the same time, it's disturbing. A winding path in blue and pink. Fields that go from green to blue and pink to yellow that leads us to some houses only outlined, almost imperceptible. A child's brush? Childish? No, in no way, Kandinsky here has experimented and managing to break the limits of the art of his time. He presents us a new winter of color and we are the child who must learn to walk that winding path within the winter of his soul and re-educate our gaze and our perception of color. The Blauer writer Bauhaus and Kandinsky as part of them will be the new ways of educating in earth and color. They are the artistical basis of our world today. Blue is the typical heavenly color. The ultimate feeling it creates is one of rest. When it sinks to almost black, it echoes grief that is hardly human. The artist must be blamed to recognize it, an unrecognized form, deaf to teaching and desires of his time, his open eyes must be directed to his inner life and his ears must be constantly attuned to the voice of inner necessity. Color directly influences the soul. Color is the keyboard, the ace of the hammers, the soul is the piano with many strings. The artist is the hand that plays. Touching one key or another purposively to cause vibrations in the soul. Vasily Vasilievich Kandinsky